This is Headphone Champs. Today I want to do a review on the Fio M11 audio player. The portable high resolution music player that Fio put out. I don't know exactly when, maybe two years ago, 2019 maybe. But I want to do a review on this because I've been using it about seven months now. And I have a few issues with it, but I also do love it. I want to explain to you what the issues are, how I feel about it, and who this is for, and if you should purchase it or not. So generally, I went to buy an audio player because I wanted a place to store all of my music. Now, if you're listening to FLAC audio, which I can't say is that much of a difference from normal MP3s, really, a lot of people cannot tell the difference, I wanted to store a lot of FLAC audio, so I had to go for something that was separate from my phone because I simply could not put, you know, 500 to 1,000 gigabytes worth of FLAC audio albums onto a normal phone here. So I went for a music player, and I also had a amp, a Fio A5 amp, and I always loved the X5 that I used to have because I used to go out from the 3.5 millimeter output into the amp, and I go through line out here, as you can see here, you click this button, and it'll say this, you say OK and then it becomes line out. So you can use the 3.5 into an amp and then you can play music loudly off the amp. You can turn up the bass boost. I love this for that. I used to have them both together when I had it plugged into my HD8 DJs and I used to crank up the bass. I used to love that. But now I've went back on that. I don't listen to my HD8 DJs much anymore. So I use this more for other reasons I'll get into later. But I want to talk about the design of it. I do love how this uh, works here. Now this on the side here is for changing the song. As you can see, I'm going through the songs here. This is for changing the songs and this little knob, this golden knob is for the volume. Now the volume goes up to 120 here, which is really good. And when you go through line out, it doesn't really matter which this uh, volume doesn't do anything here on the line out if you're going through a 3.5 millimeter output. So there's a press and play here. This is really, really useful. I like this a lot. I don't have to go into my phone to pause the music when you're out and about listening to your Bluetooth headphones or something. You can just click this button anytime you want to pause the music. It can be in your pocket. You don't really have to look at the actual screen here to pause the music. I like that for that reason. Now at the bottom here you have your 4.4 output, you have your little one here, I forgot which one that is, a balanced output, this is great, I'm going to explain to you why I use this one a lot. And you have your USB-C which is also great. Now the Bluetooth on this is a Bluetooth 4.2. Now I don't know much about Bluetooth codec and what that Bluetooth 4.2 means versus a 5.0. Obviously the 5.0 is better, but a lot of people debate whether the sound quality is better. I really wish this had 5.0 Bluetooth because, you know, it, it, it came out of just two years ago and Bluetooth 5.0 has been out for so long. Don't know why they wouldn't put that in here. Um, I think they should have. I think that was a mistake on their part and 4.2... We'll get into that a little later too, but right now let's talk about more of the design. And as you can see here, it's a really beautiful little device. Um, at the bottom here, you can see that the 4.4 hole here is really big. So let's say you're taking this to the beach or something. I, I really worry about this. I really wish there was something I can put over it or something just so sand and stuff doesn't go in here because I like bringing this uh, Bluetooth player out when I bring my JBL Extremes out. I have all my music on here, I just connect and play music. This worries me, sometimes I'll put tape over this whole section so you know, your sand doesn't go in there because that will be a huge issue if it did. Now I like this small little device, it's really a square and cuby. As you can see it's like way thicker than the OnePlus 8 Pro here. <clears throat> so that's a small issue I have but of course it has a lot of technology in it so it's going to be a little thicker. And yeah, so overall the design, eh, there's no, nothing much to it. You're not going to complain if you're buying this device and be like, I hate this design, it's the worst. Like, come on, it's just a little device here, it looks nice. That's about it. So I want to get into some um, issues I have with the, the firmware, because I do have a lot of issues with this thing. So, so when you want to go into the music player, so I'm going to open it back up. 
And do you see how I have the song that I was playing last right here? So let's say I want to go to this album, right? You're going to go to these three buttons on the top right here and it says album. So you're going to click album and it has zero songs total. I don't know why this is the case. This actually drives me crazy about this device. Many firmware updates and they haven't changed this. I don't know why this is the case. I can't see the full album. I just have the last song I was playing, which is this. Now, if I want to go back to this album, I have to go here. So I have to go to local music, micro SD2. I have to go down here. It shows you where, where it was playing last, albums here. And now I'm at the album that I was playing last. That's how long it takes to get back to the album that you were just playing. That will drive you crazy. I don't know why they have not changed that. Now this play all button is totally useless because it doesn't work. See, it will not play all of this. I don't even know why that button is there. Now let's go back to here, right? Play all. I have 5,127 songs total. Can you guys see that? So when I say play all, nothing happens. Once again, you can't play all. I don't know why they would even have that up there if you can't play it. After all these firmware updates, they haven't changed that. No one thought to change it. Why doesn't it work? I have no idea. Drives me crazy. So here, when you go to all songs, you see all of the songs you have. 5,127 songs. Now it shows all of the songs you have here, but let's say you want to play them on shuffle. Let's see if it works. File not found. Do you guys see that? File not found. Why is this the case? You go on all songs, you can't play all the songs. I just wanted to shuffle through them. Some of them work here, as you can see, but let's shuffle. Let's go to shuffle here. I think this is shuffle. So let's go next song file not found. It just skips the songs until it finds an actual playable song. See, some of them work, file not found, and it'll skip the song and then it go to a song that actually works. Does not make sense to me because all of this music, if you look into the folders here, they do work. So I can go to any folder. The only time music will work 100% is if you go into the folders the SD chips, right? You go straight into them and then I have them sorted. I did this on my computer. So you can go through here and play all of the music, but you can only play the music like this. You go to the album, then you can play it through. You can't play all, of course, for some reason. Um, if you play, press this button, like obviously you can go to this song and press next. Yeah, of course it'll work. But let's say you want to play all of Beyonce's albums. Play all. No, it does not work. Drives me crazy. Please, Theo, if you're watching, please do an update to change that. That is unacceptable, really, for a device that's $660, including tax. As Canadian, it's just unacceptable. Where is that? So, here's something I do like about this device. It is the technical support here. So when you want to update it, you literally just click into this app, technical support, firmware update. Click that button and it updates. Now anyone that had the X5, the Theo X5, I had that a few years back, it died on me completely. I ordered a battery from AliExpress and inserted the battery perfectly as I said, still did not work. My X5 was permanently dead, that's why I had to go for the Theo M11. So the X5, uh, if you want to update the firmware on it, you had to put the firmware on the SD card, put the SD card in the device, and then restart the device or something like that. It had this, you know, complicated step after step process to update the device. The thing I like about this one a lot is just one button and updates. Now, after a few updates, now originally, if you guys look here, do you guys just see the little circle thing? See that circle, the, the loading circle? That never existed before. Two updates prior, that circle, as you can see, it's faster now, but it, it originally was instantaneous. Now it has a circle, loading circle, before everything you press on. 
Um, that drives me crazy. So I guess they updated something and made it more complicated for the system to recognize the files. So now the loading circle takes a little longer. So that's another issue here. Um, all of the you know last songs you played are starting here, but a lot of this is pointless to use because a lot of this won't, won't even work. Drives you crazy, of course. But here we go. This is how you're supposed to find your music, through the SD cards one and two. Now the Fio M11 has two micro SD cards. The Fio M11 Pro has better sound apparently, but only has one. So the Fio M11, for most people is going to be the perfect one to listen to unless you have highly sensitive IEMs let's go for the M11 Pro but for the average person don't waste your money on that just stick to this one if they're still selling this if you can find this I don't know because the uh, feel likes to discontinue things randomly and no one can get it anymore but I'm glad I have this but as you can see here, it has two micro SDs. You can get up to 256 gigabyte SDs or even higher than that, I believe. You have to look into it. But I love this for that reason because I store all of my music in here. So when I go on runs, I don't take my phone with me. I take this. And then right after I'm finished my run, I go to my Starbucks app here. I don't bring my wallet with me. So my Starbucks app has the money in it. So I can just click that and actually pay with Starbucks through my Fio M11. I love that it has the Play Store and you can download all of the same apps that you would be able to download off of a phone. Now, the Qualcomm chip, the aptX chip on this is great, but I have to be honest guys, I think the this OnePlus 8 Pro here also has that same exact chip. So if you are purchasing this and all you're gonna use this for is Bluetooth headphones, you have to really think about if you need this. I would suggest go with a phone that has the same chip and has micro SD card, which this one doesn't. If you can find a phone that with an aptX HD chip, Qualcomm chip, and a micro SD that can take up to 500 gigabytes, I would say just put your FLAC audio onto your phone and use that if you only have a Bluetooth device. If you need an audio player for multiple reasons, such as you want to listen to Bluetooth headphones, if you want to go from the 3.5 output here, because a lot of phones don't have the jack anymore. So if you want to go from, just listen to headphones with the 3.5 millimeter jack, here you go. And if you want to use this as a line output into a preamp and then play the music, that's also phenomenal with that. And people, the 4.4, this is how I listen to a lot of my music on my HD6X is here. Let's bring this into play. This is the SMSL SP200 amp. 4.4 into the balanced output here. I have this. This is where I plug this in. Do you see this? And once you plug that in, you have the 4.4 balanced output into the SMSL SP200 THX amp. Why is that better? Because I really believe the wattage that comes out of here is more powerful gives you more of a great sound. Now here is the difference. When I'm on line out here, through the 4.4 millimeter output, the volume can be changed. So I don't know if changing the line out to PO makes a difference when you're going through balanced output here. It definitely makes a difference when you're going through 3.5 millimeter output into an amp and you change this to line out, you can definitely tell the difference. And then the volume knob doesn't even work because the line out just gives you the most powerful signal possible. With the balanced output, it lets you change the signal strength, right? So you can go all the way up. I like to keep this at 100 here. I don't go all the way up. I just feel like the power is too much when I go all the way up. It makes it makes the headphones here sound a little distorted and weird, grainy a little. Maybe there's too much output being shot through the 4.4 balanced output here. Um, that's why I like to turn that down to 100 and go through the high gain up this way and then crank this up. So that's what I really like this for. You're not gonna see that obviously in a phone. So this is why it's important if that's what you're listening to it, using this for. So there's a, you can download a lot of apps, SoundCloud, you can have, see the, anything in the Play Store here, you guys, anything in the Play Store you can have. You can play games if you'd like, right? Um, sorry, let me just turn down this ISO so you guys can see.
So anything in the Play Store, you guys can download. See, I'm gonna go to Title, for instance. I don't have it on my phone, I don't need to. Oh, sorry guys, I don't have my internet on. Wi-Fi, turning that on. There you go. Try again. Here you go. So titles on here, everything else that you guys need would be on here. If that's how you listen to music, for me, all of my music is on SD cards. So I have all my music on here. So that's what it's for. Now if you're just listening with Bluetooth headphones, if you have something like the Sennheiser Momentum 3s, I understand they have APTX technology, so you might think you need a high-end audio player to hear the full effect of them. I don't think so. A lot of phones actually do have that now. Like I said, my OnePlus 8 Pro has APTX HD technology. It has the Qualcomm chip, and it'll tell you what, right when you connect to the device, it'll say that it's on. Now I'm gonna open up my Sennheiser Momentum 3s, and I want you to see what happens here when I connect, when I do, just open them up. So it's gonna say something here. We're waiting. It should connect to this. So right now I believe it's connected to my phone. So we're gonna see here, cause I believe it's supposed to be connected. Yeah, Bluetooth is on. Don't know why it's not connecting to the Momentum 3s. Interesting, because they always do. So I'm gonna connect to the, just click the button. Pairing rejected? Why? Interesting. That's really weird. Mind you, there's no reason why it shouldn't be connecting here. It does sometimes, I don't know why. There's some weird stuff going on. Look at that. Because, it connect, the, because the Sennheiser Momentum 3s should connect to two devices at the same time. So right now it's connected into my phone. It also should be able to connect into this automatically since it's already on here. Let's try that again. Okay, let's open them back up. That's my phone. This should be the phone one here. Okay, so what is happening? I don't know. As you can see, this device is not amazing for connecting to Bluetooth devices. Like I said, if you want something for Bluetooth, go for something else. Now let me see here, I will disconnect from my phone just to see what happens. I disconnect. As you can hear, let's see if it connects to this. Hmm, interesting. Still not connecting. Wow. Now I have to, what, unpair this? Let's go to this Smart Control Sennheiser Momentum 3 app. Now it wants me to repair it with the device. That's insane. Okay, so let me just hold these down. There we go. There you go. Not supported. There, Qualcomm chip. See that? Qualcomm APTX chip? That tells you that it has that chip in this device here and that it supports what's in here in the Sennheiser Momentum 3s. So finally, it connected. As you can see on top, it says APTX. APTX here. So not the APTX HD. That's why I haven't turned it on in the settings as you saw earlier. So now I'm going to turn them off. Let's see if it connects. There you go, see, right away. And now let's see if my phone works. Let me just turn on the Bluetooth. It did. Bluetooth. Yep, see that? Bluetooth device supports Qualcomm APTX. And that's what I was trying to do. So now it's connected to both devices. That's cool, I like these for that. But like I said, the device connection for Bluetooth is not the best on here, but that's not really what I care about. And it does connect, you just have to go through all of these steps sometimes because it forgets the device for some weird reason. But that's okay. Now I wanna do a quick test on the search engine on this device. 
So let's see if it works. So right now I'm on all music, right? So let's go to local music here. Let's go to, see when you go to all songs, there's 5,127 songs. So let's go, I wanna search Eminem. Let's go search Eminem. So I have Eminem here. It says search result, 30 Eminem songs, 30. Mind you, I have Eminem's full discography in FLAC. It's not showing me all of his songs. Now let's go back to the actual folder. Like I said, the folder is where all the music is. So it should be able to find it if it's on here. Now, micro SD, it's gonna search both of these SDs to look for Eminem. So let's go again and let's go look for Eminem. Eminem, once again, only 30 songs. It's not searching for all of Eminem's music. Don't know why it can't do that, because let's go to SD card one, let's go to where Eminem is, here we go. So Eminem discography flack. I have all albums, bootleg mixtapes, everything, compilations, EP, and let's go to here, because on the artist, it should say Eminem on all of these pretty much. So let's go to, yeah, so we're on here. So none of these songs from the 8 Mile CD came up. And as you can see here, the artist is Eminem. The search engine could not find that. Like, can you believe that? All of these Eminem songs did not pop up. Only a select few, I don't know why they showed up on it, but for some reason it didn't show anything else on here. Sorry guys, the light is right right there, so that's not good. So yeah, the search does not work. Can you believe that? I don't know why they would put all of this, uh, All I don't know why they would put a lot of these things on here if most of them don't work. But like I said, I'm not too anal about this. I actually enjoy just going directly into the SSD and just going to specifically what I wanna play as you can see here and just clicking whatever and then playing it through here. If you're one of those people that just like playing every single song on here in shuffle, this is not for you because it won't work. Don't know why, you're gonna have to contact support and FIO and, and ask them. This is not exactly that user friendly as an app here, the FIO music player. Drives me crazy, but what can you do? Another thing I really like about this, if you don't have that specific song that you want to listen to on your FLAC audio here in your FIO music player, well, you can just connect to the Wi-Fi and go on YouTube. YouTube here on this device can play at 720p, which does give you a good sound. Like, it's great sound. It doesn't sound terrible, uh, deal-breaking. Oh, this is garbage. I need my FLAC audio only. No, trust me, people. If you're listening to headphones such as the HD6Xs here, you don't need FLAC audio. They are extremely resolving. You can go directly on YouTube, even podcasts, as you can see, sound great. So you can look up the song and just play the song off of YouTube. And that's why I really like this device because you're not just confined to only the songs you have on your FIO music player. You can go right to YouTube, Spotify, Tidal, connect to Wi-Fi, and just listen to anything you want to listen to. SoundCloud here. That's the great thing, right? Even the smart control, if you have the Sennheiser Momentum 3s, you can go directly on Sennheiser here and just, just adjust the EQs, whatever you need to do, right? This is the great thing about this device. And this is just great for the value, I think. It's a great price for it. Um, you can do a lot of things. Like I said, it is missing Bluetooth 5.0, which is the only setback here because I was going on a run with these today and it was dropping in connection for some reason when it was in my left pocket and I had the Sennheiser Momentum 3s on, it dropped connection sometimes. I switched it to my right uh, pocket and it didn't do that anymore. So I know the Bluetooth is not amazing, like it doesn't connect. There's something about the connection, it's not that great and I would attribute that to the 4.2 connection. I wish they would have gave it the 5.0 but it is what it is. I don't think they designed this for people that only listen to Bluetooth headphones. That's why I went ahead and purchased it. Like I said, the outputs are the main selling point of this device is the outputs. So people, there you have it. So if you are looking for just 
a Bluetooth audio player, stay away from this. Why? Because it also only has 4.2 Bluetooth technology. Now, I don't know the exact details of what difference that makes, but in my opinion, the 4.2 might not have a fuller sound. People will argue about that, but I believe this is going to drive some people crazy. I believe the 5.0 Bluetooth makes a difference because when I play the same song off of both of these on my Sennheiser Momentum 3s, I feel like the phone goes a little louder and I do attribute that to the Bluetooth 5.0 technology. I think that's what's making the sound more bigger and better in my opinion. It doesn't make that much of a difference. I don't want to throw people off with that one. Like this is garbage and sound, you can't even, you can tell a huge difference. No, it's slight, but I can tell the sound is louder off of the Bluetooth on the phone here. Now, maybe that is attributed to the Bluetooth technology 4.2. That's what kind of threw me off with this because I was just like, if they could just make this 5.0, you know, then you could have that difference. You can be like, yes, you know, perfect. It, uh, it makes it a little more future proof. That's why the FIO M11 is mostly for wired sound music that comes out of the 3.5 or the 4.4 here. So it has the 2.5 here, 4.4, 3.5, and has the USB-C connection. So if you have the Sennheiser Momentum 3s, you can use a USB-C connection to listen to music too, and apparently the sound is the best going through USB-C. This is why this is great. I believe the Sennheiser Momentum 3s don't do APTX HD, I'm not sure, but I can promise you, you can't really tell a difference. Now, in certain FLAC audio, I've done that test where you have FLAC audio, AAC, and MP3, and you have to choose which one's which. I did get most of them as FLAC uh, wave uncompressed, actually. I picked the wave uncompressed, especially with vocals. I can tell the difference based on the sibilance in the notes in the, in the voice. The S's are an easy giveaway if you want to know which is higher quality. Pretty much, if it's slightly more sibilant and annoying, you know it's a higher quality audio. That's why it's not always the best. Flack audio is not always the best. So don't be too anal about the sound. It's barely noticeable. For whoever wants this out there, if you're looking for a music player that you specifically want all of your songs on, you can use this and you need a wired connection. If you're gonna buy this pretty much only for the Bluetooth use, I don't think it's worth it. Unless you have a lot of flack audio and you're really anal about the sound, you want two uh, micro SDs to put all of your music on and you just wanna grab this and go and listen to music, then yeah, go ahead. But I suggest buy this if you're using this with a preamp. This is where this shines the most because the Bluetooth technology, like I said, is only 4.2. All of the phones are 5.0 and higher now, so I believe the wireless Bluetooth connection is stronger with 5.0. Not only that, but I think the sound is a tiny bit better, in my opinion. A lot of people will disagree. That's just my opinion. So um, people, if you guys want to purchase this, go right along ahead. And I really like this. I use this pretty much every day if I'm listening to music. I'm gonna do a separate video on my music station, my audio file system. So stay tuned for that because I believe it's the best audio file system for the price for technical listening. And this is always my source. I don't want a DAC that goes into a computer, a topping D30 or whatever it may have you. I just want a specific station to listen to music, no computer use just this and this is perfect for that and there you have it people this is headphone champs signing off